Welcome back to the episode 4.1 of our video course Parallel Programming and Optimization with Intel Xeon FICO processors. In the previous lectures we already discussed the purpose and the architecture of Intel Xeon FICO processors. After that we studied programming models for Intel Xeon FICO processors native and offload. Now we are beginning a new chapter, number 4, titled Expressing Parallelism. In this chapter, our goal is to learn how to express data parallelism, thread parallelism and process parallelism in applications for Intel Xeon processors and Xeon FICO processors. We will begin the chapter with a discussion of expressing data parallelism. This is necessary to take full advantage of vector processing units in every core of Intel Xeon FICO processor. Earlier in the course we mentioned that automatic vectorization in the context of Intel processor architectures is synonymous with SIMD processing. SIMD is a class of parallel operations in Flynn's taxonomy and it stands for single instruction, multiple data. This diagram illustrates two programs with data parallelism. On the left we have a scalar loop with n iterations which adds each element of array B to the respective element of array A. On the right is a vector loop. This pseudocode has the number of iterations equal to n divided by 16. In each iteration 16 consecutive elements of B are added to 16 elements of A. A processor such as Intel Xeon Phi with 16 wide CMD instruction support can perform this 16 wide addition as one operation. This effectively accelerates calculations by a factor of 16 compared to a code that uses scalar instructions. Another way to look at it is that if your application does not use vector instructions where they could be used, you may be using only 1 16th of the arithmetic performance available on your processor. The value 16 is only an example. The actual width of vectors depends on the data type and on the vector instruction set. As we started speaking of vector instruction sets, let us revisit a table that we have seen earlier. It lists vector instruction sets supported by Intel processors starting from the late 1990s. It reminds us of the instruction set supported by the latest Intel CPU architecture, codenamed Haswell, and by the first generation of Xeon Phi instruction set IMCI, and by the upcoming second generation instruction set AVX512. Also at this point we can recall the discussion that we had earlier in the course about code portability. It is best when the application uses the exact instruction set supported by the architecture. However, some architectures are backward compatible. For example, a second generation Intel Xeon Phi processor supports AVX512, but it can run SSE2 and AVX instructions in the compatibility mode, in other words at the cost of efficiency loss. We are beginning to learn how to express data parallelism in code. There are two fundamentally different approaches. One approach is to explicitly call the processor's vector instructions using assembly or special functions called intrinsics. The other approach is to express data parallel loops in a high-level language such as C, C++ and Fortran in a way that allows the compiler to use vector instructions for those loops. Throughout this training we focus on the second approach, which we call automatic vectorization. We advocate relying on automatic vectorization rather than assembly or intrinsics. That is because this approach is portable between the Xeon and Xeon Phi architectures and also ensures future portability of user code. Before we proceed to learning how to use automatic vectorization, let's see an example of explicitly vectorized codes that rely on intrinsics. This will help us to understand what is happening behind the scenes when the compiler automatically vectorizes loops in C, C++ or Fortran. The listing on the left adds array B to array A element by element and uses SSE 4.2 instructions for that. The workflow of this calculation has three stages. First, we need to load data from the main memory into special variables that represent vector registers. Second, we call a vector add instruction on the two registers. Third, we store the contents of the resulting vector register back into memory. As you can see, the stride in the loop is 4 because SSE 4.2 vectors are 128 bit wide, which packs 4 single precision floating point numbers. 
The listing on the right performs the same calculation, but this time using IMCI instructions of Intel Xeon FICO processors. The workflow here is similar, however, the stride is equal to 16, because Intel Xeon FICO processors vector registers are 512 bit wide, so this code calls 4 times fewer vector instructions. If we tried to compile the code with SSC 4.2 instructions for the Xeon Phi architecture, we would get a compilation error, because the corresponding instructions are not supported on Xeon Phi. Therefore, to port this code to the many core architecture, we would have to rewrite the part with intrinsics from scratch. If you still decide to use compiler intrinsics in your code, for the full list of instructions supported by Intel architectures, refer to the compiler reference manual at the following link. In the next episode, we will talk about automatic vectorization feature of Intel compilers and what language constructs can be successfully vectorized. Thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you in the next episode.